I'm Jason, and this is the 2023 Hyundai Santa Cruz. Now, somewhat disappointingly, this has nothing to do with Tom Cruise at Christmas time. But as always, we're going to take a look at what this thing is, go from the outside in, and talk about what it is like to live with, as well as who this thing is actually targeted at, what we should even be calling it. Let's go ahead and take a look. So what is this thing? Is it a truck? Is it a crossover with a truck bed? Is it a, some people are calling it a trucklet. Hyundai is calling it a sports adventure vehicle. I don't really care what you call it as long as you don't call it a trucklet though. But the target here is people who are in urban environments but like to get away for adventures and maybe you don't want stuff stuffed into your trunk. Maybe it's dirty and wet and gross. You got camping gear, whatever it is you'd like to have some sort of exterior spot like a truck bed to throw stuff in but you don't need a full-on truck because you're not like, building houses or something and that tracks pretty well based on what I was kind of thinking I looked that up after drove it around for a couple of days and you know I live up here in New England where the streets are kind of narrow uh, parking spots aren't super big so it's nice to have something that's a little bit more crossover like thing is based on the Tucson, the Hyundai Tucson crossover platform. So it's nice having something a little bit smaller, easier to maneuver around uh, up here in New England. But then if you need a little bit extra utility, you just want to throw some dirty crap in the back of your car, you just toss it into the truck bed. And the other benefit outside of maneuverability is that it rides pretty nice you know this thing is a unibody it's based on the Tucson it's not like a body on frame um, and the suspension does go you know you get a little bit of bounce to it but for the most part it rides really pretty nicely I haven't been in the Tucson but I have been in the Santa Fe um, and it rides pretty similarly it's got a little bit more bounce to it but overall pretty smooth ride going on and pretty quiet in here um, you know we're not in a luxury car here but um, but for the most part, you know, tire noise, wind noise, not really too bad. It's a pretty nice environment in here. Plus it's, you know, comfortable. Now I mentioned maneuverability. It is still, you know, we have this nice long 118 inch wheelbase going on. So this thing is not, it's not going to handle like a sports car or anything. Plus it is front wheel drive biased yes it does have an all-wheel drive system but it is front biased so it's not ha the handling here isn't like crazy good but the turning radius is a little bit wide but as far as you know trucks go um you know this thing is is pretty easy to maneuver around town now let's talk about the power delivery because we've got a couple different options here uh, there is a four cylinder that is naturally aspirated and there is a turbocharged version. The lower trims get the one without the turbo and this here, since this is the limited trim, the top three trims for this year because there's a special night uh, edition this year. So the top three trims get the turbocharger, which is going to give you 281 horsepower. 311 pound feet of torque and honestly this feels like the right amount of power for this thing i have not been in the one with the base engine so i can't really speak to whether or not that one feels underpowered but this feels like the right amount of power for this car or truck or whatever we're calling it and because we're in one of the upper trims instead of a traditional eight speed torque converter automatic we have a dual clutch and Hyundai's dual clutch transmission is very good. I really like their dual clutch. It's very snappy. Uh, it can be aggressive when you need it to be. And you know, we've got the paddle shifters if you do want to use those. And those are nice and quick to respond. I really like Hyundai's dual clutch. Now I mentioned that this one is all wheel drive. It's Hyundai's H-Track all wheel drive system, uh, which is a front biased all wheel drive where the back wheels can kick in as needed. This truck also does come in a front wheel drive version. So you can get either one, um, but when you're up here in the limited trim level, it is only all wheel drive, but the other trim levels do offer you a front wheel drive version. Um, note that those are going to be a little bit lighter and drop your towing capacity a little bit. So those are gonna be 
3,500 pound towing capacity, this one gives you a 5,000 pound towing capacity. And when you option that all wheel drive, you also get the center locking differential. So at lower speeds, I believe it's up to 37 miles per hour, uh, you can lock in your all wheel drive so it'll do a 50-50 split uh, up until you hit that threshold. That's gonna be, you know, if you're on really rough terrain or if you're really bad snow or something, um, you can lock that in since you're probably not going to be going super fast anyway. As always, get good tires. All-wheel drive is not a substitute for good tires. But this one here is on primacy all seasons. That's what it's going to come standard on. But if you are going to be in a lot of snow, make sure to get good winter tires. Now let's talk a little bit more about livability though, because this thing really is, like I said, it's more of an urban truck. This is going to be something that you're probably going to daily drive most of the time. Go away for the weekends, go away for adventures on the weekends. Uh, so it really has to do the daily duty thing well, and it really does, like I mentioned, it rides nicely. It's easy to maneuver around town, but it also has a lot of great features. Um, Hyundai's suite of safety features is really good. Um, and I've said this in a couple of the other videos. If you've seen any of my other Hyundai videos, then you know this already. But the lane centering is very good. It is one of the best systems out there in terms of lane centering. This does have the full speed radar cruise with stop and go. Um, it has very good blind spot monitoring, blind spot detection, where if somebody is in the lane when you hit your turn signal, it'll give you a a beep that's not super harsh and it'll lower your music it'll make sure that you hear it without like blaring and being super overly aggressive uh, it's a really really good system and in some of their cars and trucks they also offer this thing where it gives you the blind spot in your instrument cluster here gives you a blind spot camera i really like that you know this one does have that there's only in the upper trims of the santa cruz um, but it, you know when you hit your turn signal it'll show you on either right or left It'll show you that camera over there that camera view So a little bit of extra blind spot Protection there and one thing I really like with that as well is that it still shows you your speed It still shows you your rpms when you hit that camera. They really do a good job here of of communication with the driver, letting the driver know like what settings things are at. If you change a setting on something, if you change your wiper settings, rather than having to guess which slot you're in, whether you're in the fast, medium, or auto, or whatever, it actually tells you which mode you're in, which is a nice feature that a lot of cars don't have, which is really strange. It seems like something that every car should have at this point. Now, I did mention it does have those great blind spot features. It does also have pretty good visibility. The mirrors are nice and beefy. The side view mirrors are nice and big and beefy. Uh, out the front, you can see pretty well despite being kind of up a little bit. Because remember, we're at like crossover height, not a full on truck height. So, really, not an issue seeing out the front. Seeing out the back is a little bit tight though. The window is pretty small. And this guy is has places to be apparently the window is pretty small back there but generally speaking it's not too bad in terms of vis visibility uh, especially with those extra cameras that we've got with the blind spot monitoring and the blind spot detection plus this one actually has the uh, panoramic view monitor as well which is really helpful when we're when I've been parking in my garage, you know, if you have a garage, the panoramic view monitor is really nice. Gives you cameras out both sides. It shows the skinny truck. My my daughter likes to call it the super skinny truck because it has uh, camera views out both of the sides. And then you've got the top down view as well. It's really helpful, especially for parking in you know a tight space like a garage. Make sure you're in all the way, but you're not smashing into stuff uh the clutter that you have in the front of your garage if you're like me you know in terms of fuel economy here you kind of expect trucks to not have great fuel economy if we're calling it a truck whatever we're calling it 
Uh, this thing is rated at 19 city, 27 highway, about 22 combined. And I've been averaging 21, so not too far off from there. We do also have a couple different driving modes. You know, those are, they're not gonna adjust your suspension or anything, they'll adjust your throttle response a little bit and your steering a little bit. But for the most part, the steering feels nice and easy, but it does have a little bit of feedback to it, a little bit of a resistance to it. Uh, so it's not like the super light video game steering. But we do have, we have a snow mode, we have a smart mode, we have a normal mode, and we have a sport mode. And when you go between those modes, really it's gonna be like your throttle that's gonna change the most in sport mode. When you hit the gas, you, you could jolt yourself off the line if you wanted to, if you wanted to hit the gas hard. But in the eco, in the smart mode, it's not really an eco mode, but in the smart mode or the normal mode, it'll kind of ease you into it a little bit more. So exterior wise, let's start in the back here because this is the coolest part, right? This is why you buy this truck. Uh, it's just your all wheel drive system, the H-Track and the 2.5T because it's got the turbo 2.5 liter engine with the turbo. We've got these steps on here built in. That's nice for getting up into the truck. This dark chrome is specific to this limited trim level. You got your backup camera in there as well. Um, there is a grab handle here for this or even you can just use your key. Nice hefty key. I like the way that they do these keys here at Hyundai. Hold on to that. Pops right down. Now this bed is, this is like, it's about a four foot bed. If you're looking at something like a Tacoma, it's gonna be either a five or a six foot bed. So you do lose some space there. But of course you're buying this to avoid buying a full on truck, right? And this one, since we are in one of the upper trims, we got this cover here as well, and that will close in lock. And this, my favorite part about back here is actually, there's another little compartment down here. I've been throwing groceries in there and stuff, having no problems there, because there's not really anywhere inside to put that stuff and you don't necessarily want it all flying around. Now this, uh, we're looking at about 27 cubic feet of space is what this is. So you're, you're about on par with like some, some of the crossovers and stuff, some of the midsize and larger crossovers. But of course you have vertical space uh, that you don't have in those crossovers. The way it's laid out, saying 27 cubic feet is kind of a weird way to put it. Um, but it is plenty of space for your camping gear and anything you might need, plus having that cover is huge. All right, let's go ahead and look at the side. Here, we're looking at Hampton gray. You got gray, black, white. There's a sand color. There's like a light blue. It kept with the earthy tones, no big sort of popping bright colors. I wish they had one or two more kind of fun, interesting colors, but it does look pretty nice in this color. I'd probably go with that light blue, that blue stone, I believe it's called. We're looking at 118 inch wheelbase. Again, if you're up into truck territory, a Tacoma is like 125, I believe. Um, so a little more compact there definitely helps for maneuvering around town. Overall length, 195 inches, which is on par with like full-size sedans, a Palisade, even a, a Hyundai Palisade, their big three row SUV from Hyundai is 196 and change. Um, and then if you get into a, something like a Tacoma, a full on quarter ton truck, you're near like 225 minimum, you start running into problems with parking and stuff. This thing fits in a space even up here in New England where things are a little bit smaller. You got the roof rails up here. Sun sunroof on this one is standard because we're in the limited trim. And this one's sitting on the big 20 inch wheels. The upper two, the upper trims are gonna get you those 20s. If you're in one of the lower trims, you'll be on 18s. I really like the look of these wheels. Those are wrapped in Michelin Primacy all seasons. Body colored mirror caps here, integrated turn signals. These are heated in the upper trims. And we've got the blind spot monitoring. Blind spot monitoring on there is standard. This bed, the bed looks really small from the side. That's kind of interesting. You know, when you're looking inside the bed, it looks huge, but when you're looking at it from the side, it looks really tiny. You got the little little Easter eggs here. Got the little, the little Santa Cruz trucks on the side. I love that little extra detail. And this thing is touch to lock and inside to unlock. Uh, the touch to, uh, to lock does take a second. That was something with, uh, with the Santa Fe as well, as well as the Kia I was in. I don't know why there's a little bit of a delay there, but I like that it has that touch to lock and touch to unlock. 
the front fascia design is slightly different here uh, when you're in the limited trim than when you're in some of the other trim levels. And, and the upper trims are gonna get you full LED lights, whereas the lower trims are gonna get you halogens. So I'm glad we got full LEDs here as well as LED daytime running lights. Really like this front end design. It's pretty similar to the other you know, Hyundai vehicles, the Palisade and the Santa Fe. So it looks pretty familiar, but I really like this look, especially with the chrome down here. And it's got the dark chrome all around. Tons of cooling. You can see the intercooler poking through uh, because this one does have a turbo. Really, really nice looking front end. Now for 2023, there is also the night trim level, uh, which is a special edition where you get some sort of blacked out trim pieces. So, you know, not exactly a fun color, but something a little bit different than these standard colors. All right, let's go ahead and hop inside. All right, up in the front here, the more gloss black in the door, not my favorite, uh, but you do have more of that carpeting. I really like the design, I like this. I got going around through the vents. I wish the vents were actually a little bit bigger, but I do like that chrome. You know, I gotta do the touch everything, whatever. You're not expecting super high level premium interior in a truck like this, but it is a pretty nice place to be. Since we're in the limited trim, these are the leatherette seats and they're heated and ventilated. And we've even got the heated steering wheel as well. And the steering wheel is nice, leather wrapped, comfortable. Pretty standard layout here for a Hyundai steering wheel um, with your information for controlling your gauge cluster as well as your infotainment. Let me start it up here. Note that this does have push button start, but it also has remote start right here on the key. No subscription, no app, anything like that. If you do want to use the remote start, you have to lock it first and then hold down the remote start button. The gauge cluster here is pretty on par with other um, with other Hyundai gauge clusters. It is a little bit more tacked on in this one though. It just looks like somebody stuck an iPad in there. Uh, it's fine, whatever. Just not the most appealing visually, but you've got all kinds of good information. Um, your speed, your speed limit, because we are in one of these upper trims. The speed limit was only in the limited trim last year. This year it's in the limited and the SEL premium. Kind of your standard stuff going on. I like that we have a full on tack and a full on uh, speedometer still, even though they're digital, it, it mimics the analog gauges. Now these buttons here, oh, the buttons on the steering wheel, the buttons over here, a swath of gloss black, all of this gloss black. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know how much I hate gloss black. Um, but what I hate even more than gloss black is the fact that, so this has a 10.25 inch screen instead of the eight inch screen, but it under in the touch screen itself works fine. There are no problems with the touch screen. But underneath it's just like all these fake capacitive touch button things that aren't even actually separated into buttons. I haven't had any issues with them, but it's just like, you can't, you can't just feel for a button or anything and it's just, it bothers me. Plus all the dust on here, it's just immediately dusty and fingerprinty. Inside the infotainment, standard Hyundai Kia infotainment, super easy to use, smooth, slick. Android Auto, it has even got the quiet mode. Love that they do that. Android Auto, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay are both wired. We do have wireless charging down here as well as a couple of USBs and a 12 volt or gloss black everywhere. Your locking differential here, your auto hold, your cameras. This one has the cameras, um, the 360 camera, super helpful, especially if you're not used to driving something quite so big. A little bit more space in here. Looks like somebody had their dog in here or something, some dog hair going on. But overall, you know, I like the interior. It's a step up from what you're gonna get in something uh, like a Tacoma or or some other kind of quarter ton kind of compact truck. It's more, it's not quite as nice as the inside of the Santa Fe, but it's it's pretty nice interior overall, all things considered here. Cup holders are out of the way. And then note that this one has the Bose sound system. Usually Hyundai uses Harman Kardon. It's a premium sound system. So that was interesting. I uh, wasn't expecting the Bose system. It sounds pretty good. 
in the back seats. 36 and a half inches of legroom, but it does feel a little tighter than that, actually. I don't know if it's the seat length or what, but it feels pretty tight back here. Uh, the car seats fit okay. The forward facing are okay. Uh, my kids' feet are a little bit uncomfortably close to the seat, but not touching yet. They're five and three. Rear facing is gonna be real tight though. No heater ventilation back here, not really expected. One thing to note if you are putting car seats back here is the latch up here is really pretty annoying to get in. Most people aren't switching cars every week, so it's not really a problem. Um, but if you're taking car seats in and out, that's gonna be kind of annoying. And we got the little window back here. It slides open. Got some cargo space in here, a little cargo net in each of the front seats, dedicated vents for the back seats and some USB ports. Got extra storage underneath the seats, which is really nice. Uh, gloss black on the door, which I hate, but I do like this little carpet thing. But you do get a cup holder back here. My kids already have their two cup holders, now they get a third in the door. So as someone who's not really a truck guy, uh, but I live up here in New England, I live in you know, a city, tight roads, tight parking spaces, um, but sometimes it's nice to get away with the family and go on an adventure. It's nice to be able to have that utility where I can throw camping gear into the truck bed, throw a couple of things back there without worrying too much about it. But then when I go grocery shopping, you know, I've got the cover that I can pull on over it or that little extra hatch area in the back with a little bit of a trunk and it can do the daily drive thing as well. Great safety features, uh, great driver assist features, and it's nice and comfortable and just easy to drive. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think about this thing that I, what you call this thing and what you think about it. Don't forget to do the, I hate to be the YouTuber that does the like and subscribe thing, but please do hit the like button, hit the share button, uh, tell people who are looking for new cars or who are just into learning about new cars. Tell them to go watch some videos and hit the like button. That'll help me get into more cars, bring more cars to you. Thanks for watching. See you next time.